So good morning, everyone, and welcome to the externally-led patient-focused drug development meeting for lupus. Uh, it's been a, a long time in the, the making, and um, we're very happy to have you uh, on behalf of our host organizations, the Lupus and Allied Diseases Association, the Lupus Foundation of America, and the Lupus Research Alliance. Uh, not only would I like to welcome all of you here in this packed room here in uh, Silver Spring, Maryland, but to all of you that are here on our uh, following along uh, online on our live webcast. Um, I would like to mention uh, to all of you that are here in the room, um, since we are webcasting it, we are going to be broadcasting live throughout the day, as well as recording the meeting, which will be available um, online uh, for your reference. Um, and so for that purpose, uh, we do ask that um, you re refrain from doing uh, additional recordings or photography as we um, will be doing that with the professional videographers and photographers. Um, without much further ado, I'd like to uh, go right into our opening remarks and introduce uh, our first speaker, which is Kathleen Arnsten, who's a lupus community representative, as well as a representative from the steering committee uh, for the planning of this patient-focused drug development meeting. Uh, so please join me in welcoming Kathleen. Thank you, James. Good morning. On behalf of the lupus community, I am absolutely honored to welcome you finally to the Lupus Patient Focused Drug Development Meeting, or PFDD for short. Hooray for that. Whether you're here in the room or joining remotely, your attendance in this landmark event is greatly appreciated by each and every one of us. We are thrilled that this day has finally come after years of planning, and I'd like to recognize and extend gratitude to those who helped to make this day a reality. Thank you to our speakers, Ms. Vidaya, Dr. Woodcock, Dr. Askanes, and Dr. Nikolov, the FDA for accepting our letter of intent, working with us, and taking part in the program. We know many of you are here and tuned in and hearing us. We hope that you are listening and understand. We'd like to thank the three convening organizations, LADA, LFA, and LRA, their wonderful staff, and the Lupus PFDD team, many, many warriors, but most especially James Valentine and the Fager BD team. They worked tirelessly along the three organizations, the nationwide network of powerful lupus groups, the healthcare providers and researchers, and our incredibly generous industry sponsors. You know this meeting would not have been possible without you. And most especially, the army of lupus warriors and their loved ones for answering our call to action, taking the survey, promoting the project, sharing your stories, and motivating us all along the way. With over 2,200 surveys completed and 600 people in attendance, this is not only record-breaking, but it is history-making. Our lupus advocacy community began over 50 years ago at kitchen tables and in church basements where the newly diagnosed and their families came together to find answers and provide comfort to each other at a time when little information existed on this confounding condition. These small groups grew into a grassroots effort nationwide that became the national organization with chapters, affiliates, and now virtual support systems that now post, tweet, chat, snap, and like with the touch of a finger. For too many decades, our community has witnessed the devastation of this relentless disease, shed countless tears, and spent hours praying and grieving in hospitals, places of worship, and burial grounds. Individuals with lupus have struggled to not only manage their disease,
but also to make their voices heard along the way in research and development. We are here today because we are frustrated with the present status of lupus therapies. The current standards of care and treatment are absolutely unacceptable. Our mantra has become, we need new drugs for lupus. So, we turned our outrage into action two years ago, and we came together to pursue the externally led PFDD initiative. The FDA has invited the participation of our community for years, first by holding an advisory committee meeting and later by issuing a guidance document to assist with new therapy development. We thank the FDA officials for your former initiatives and we commend you for soliciting comments from the patient perspective during the drug review process. We are extremely grateful that you accepted our letter of intent. I can tell you from firsthand experience as a person with lupus myself, that lupus is extremely complex, difficult to diagnose, potentially fatal, presently incurable, totally capricious, painfully limiting, life altering, dream stealing, career ending, and financially, emotionally, and physically devastating. Living with lupus is like swimming in shark infested waters. The danger and uncertainty is always present and one is armed with nothing but a will to survive. We try to stay afloat while anticipating the next attack and remain ever hopeful that a rescue ship will soon appear on the horizon. I once had a life filled with dreams and promise. My future was bright like many of you. As a language major at Colgate University, I dreamt of going off to Europe, falling in love with a prince, and living the life of a romance character. Instead, I was diagnosed with systemic lupus erythematosus and Sjogren's syndrome after years of testing emergency abdominal surgery and my first brush with death. The mysterious symptoms and recurrent infections I had experienced since childhood finally had a name. I could not pronounce it, yet I certainly was living it. From that point on, my life took on a new direction. As my classmates looked forward to careers and romances, I wondered whether I would ever graduate or even be alive in five years. My schedule revolved around prescription drugs, doctor appointments, and medical procedures, getting enough rest, avoiding the sun, and staying away from people with germs, all while attending school. Does this sound familiar? Presently, no single test exists to identify lupus, resulting in delayed diagnosis, proper medical intervention, more se severe disease manifestations, and worse patient outcomes. It is a desperate place to be when you can barely think, walk, or raise your arms above your head, and you have spent months in bone-gnawing, soul-wrenching pain, going from physician to physician, begging for help. Since there is no specific test, diagnosis is based on numerous medical appointments and lab results, a process of elimination, extreme patience, and open to clinical interpretation. You can only hope that you see a physician who was in medical school the day that they covered lupus. Lupus is an unpredictable disease because symptoms come and go and complications arise suddenly, frustrating us and our poor physicians. It is also a costly multi-system disease because we must see several specialists regularly. And because it can affect virtually any part of the body, it is called the prototypical autoimmune disease. Lupus disproportionately affects women of color in this country. It is two to three times more common among African Americans Hispanics and Latinos, 
Asians and Native Americans, minority women tend to develop lupus at a much younger age, experience more serious complications, and have higher mortality rates, up to three times the incidence and mortality of Caucasians. 90% of those affected are women, but men and children also get diagnosed with lupus. 80% of the newly diagnosed are women in their childbearing years, or what we refer to as prime of life. Fatigue is the most prevalent and incapacitating symptom that we experience. It results in decreased physical and mental function, and for many of us, it is the most disabling symptom. Existing treatments, as you heard me say before, are absolutely inadequate. Many are toxic and cause detrimental side effects with long-term use. And since there are only four currently approved drugs, many therapies are off-label, such as cancer treatments and transplant drugs. It took 56 years for the last drug to get approved. And that was over six years ago. And that meeting was held in this hotel. And yet, it is still the only drug developed specifically for lupus. For decades, the go-to drug for treating lupus has been corticosteroids. We call it the drug you love to hate. It saves your life and it fights inflammation quickly, especially in an acute situation. But this comes at a high price with horrific side effects such as glaucoma, cataracts, hypertension, diabetes, atherosclerosis, bone thinning, infection susceptibility, elevated cholesterol, obesity, manic feelings, and the appetite equal to that of four growing teenage boys. Other treatments include immunosuppressants that ablate the entire immune system, and antimalarials that can cause retinal toxicity. Chemotherapy drugs can cause infertility and miscarriages. We catch numerous infections, and some of us even end up with cancer. And here's my favorite. We take drugs to treat the side effects of other drugs, which is just ludicrous on every level. Many therapies are merely Band-Aids, treating the symptoms, and never getting to the root of the problem. Due to the complex heterogeneous nature of this disease, no two cases are like, and treatment is highly individualized. So effectively treating people like us is like balancing on your tippy toe on a pinhead. Most of us living with lupus desperately cling to the belief that there will be more effective treatments and a cure during our lifetime. Like so many others in this room, lupus cut me down in the prime of my life. It drastically impacted my future. It has stolen precious time from me, as well as the opportunities to have a successful career, financial security, or that of being a mother, just to name a few. I personally struggle with eight autoimmune disorders, and I presently take 46 drugs a day. I've endured decades of destruction from the toxic treatments I have endured, and I used to weigh 220 pounds. I have interstitial nephritis, and my entire digestive tract is impaired, so it takes five different drugs to allow me to eat food each day. The veins in my arms are useless, so I'm now on my second infusiport for all blood work and infusions, and I am blind in my right eye. But look at me, do I look ill? Like so many of you beautiful people here and connected remotely, we don't look ill. Lupus, like most autoimmune diseases, is invisible. The pervasive fatigue that those of us with lupus experience is so extreme at times, we feel lifeless, like a vampire sucked all the blood from our body. 
we take each day at a time, trying not to think of the multitude of the medications or the unpredictable course of this debilitating ailment. Our drugs are like cocktails, put in a cup and downed with our water. Our lives are filled with missed opportunities, pain, limitation, and loss. It takes a tremendous amount of self-motivation to manage our medical care, maintain our dignity, and attempt to have any quality of life. For those of us living with this debilitating disease, every two steps we take forward, we take one backward. It feels like we're constantly climbing a mountain, struggling to reach the peak and place our feet on solid ground. But as soon as we are close to the summit, we lose our foothold, plummeting backward in the unknown abyss, desperately grasping for something substantial to grab onto. Not only does this drain one physically, but the emotional toll is devastating. Dreams and goals are always being reassessed. In some days, it is simply a victory to get out of bed, shower, and put on clean pajamas. We survive through the support of loved ones, our faith, the expertise of our healthcare providers, the promise of research, and for me, I finally found my prince, who not only loves me, but supports what I believe in as well. Our loved ones have traveled every step of the way in our journey with lupus, even carrying us when we cannot continue on our own. In closing, I would like to ask my fellow Lupus advocates, warriors, spoonies, loopies, butterflies, divas, roomies, and gladiators to please stand. Now stay standing. You are the reason that we are here today. You have been given an amazing opportunity to be at the table today as an equal stakeholder in the drug development process. We understand that it's not easy to bear your souls to a room full of strangers, but your personal viewpoints and real world experiences will make all of the difference in helping to shed light on the critical need for more effective therapies. Your unique accounts will paint a vital picture for everyone here in exposing the true daily quality of life that we endure. Your contribution to this project is immeasurable and the future of lupus drug development, and we are all indebted to you. So draw strength from our passion. You have it yourselves. It is pervasive and powerful, and you are an inspiration to everyone listening and that will listen to the recording. You're truly amazing on every level, and I salute you. Thank you very much. And lastly, I would like to reemphasize that this initiative would not have been possible without the collective support of the numerous stakeholders who make up our very remarkable community. We truly appreciate your tremendous heart and for being engaged in this incredible initiative from day one. Thank you everyone for joining us here today and for keeping our hope alive and our family's hope alive that it will not take another five decades to get a better drug for lupus. Today is about all of us in the lupus community. Today marks the beginning of a new era in drug development for lupus. Today, we are making history. It is imperative 
that the next generation of people with lupus is given the chance at a better quality of life and the opportunity to pursue their dreams. After all, lupus ends with us. Thank you very much. <laughs>